Okay, I am finally interviewing Camilo Gomez uh, after being on your show like five times. Uh, so how does it feel <laughs> to finally be uh, on mine? It's great. It's uh, it's always great talking to you. Uh, <laughs> thanks. It's uh, good talking to you too, man. Um, all right. So I, I, I was like, you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff we could talk about, but um, uh, I, I think the thing that, like, when I when I first reached out to you, I was like, man, like, what, what should you talk about? And you're like, man, I have some fucking thoughts about like the libertarian movement. So uh, let let's get into that. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's curious because uh, I I live in in in, in Peru, so obviously like p- people might know like you know Mario Vargas Llosa or or. Uh, the the writer the, and, and Hernando de Soto, the economist, who both are Peruvian and both are uh, supposedly libertarians, although many question that that uh, you know that qualification. But that's how they define, and you know, like they kind of have the support for uh, market economy, and and I think they are not necessarily socially conservative, but mm. I, I think it that's the curious part that they have a lot of reactionary ideas. Despite you know not being the average kind of, uh, of of social conservative, and I think that's some something that that I am seeing in the libertarian movement. That, that to be honest, it, it's true that mostly uh, speaks in English and that it's mostly on the anglophone. But mm. uh, I am seeing that kind of attitude of of, of, of of libertarians that are trying to 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 present themselves as as, as part of the of the of the right, they try to confirm their, their their identity, which explains why I think there has been a, you know a support for you know for for figures like Trump in, in the U.S. or Bolsonaro yep. in America, and you know and and even in 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 Eastern Europe, like some support for you know like basically authoritarian nationalists yeah. who are yeah. not even that sympathetic to free market ideas. So um, I think that. It's it's an example of how you know for in on one road there is a, a libertarianism that that tries to present itself as much more right wing, less trying to 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 reach out to 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 the left in some way, mm. you know. Because in other times, like uh, if people search, there is a Mrs. Institute article that is quite respectful, for example, of Evo Morales, and and mm. there was kind of this sense that the paleo libertarians try to to reach to the left to yeah. To, to Marxists, particularly in the 2000s, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and try to generate a kind of left-right alliance against imperialism, particularly in the U.S. But I think it's it's curious how it has faded because if one needs to think about kind of the 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 the, 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 the strain within libertarianism that that has more sympathy to the left, mm. I will say that today is the much more uh, cosmopolitan strain, kind yep. of the more uh, I, I think that 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 J- the late Justin Raimondo did a, a division of libertarianism between the kind of paleo conservatives, the, the paleo libertarians that were kind of more outside of DC, and the paleo and the, the cosmo <laughs> cosmopolitan libertarians were in DC, but not just in DC, but in in cosmopolitan areas. We obviously see, you know, like the the positivity elements about like. Uh, hmm. Uh, immigration and, and and kind of you know dynamism and, and social tolerance. Yep. So I think it's it's really important because I, I think that those phenomena are, are are going in a, in, a, in a very different direction. But I I think there are things that are quite relevant and and I think that for different reasons, uh, both liberals and, and 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 leftists are not too acknowledged of them because mm. uh, Tyler Cohen said you know like early this year that. Fusionism is that, like the, the idea that, mm. that conservatism, like the conservative coalition was going to be a coalition between social conservative, like neoconservative and, 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 and libertarians, it's kind of that. And, and and there are many reasons for that. I, I think that that the, the vision that, you know, like kind of, uh, I think the threat of China, the, the mm. perceived threat that, that China um, has, uh, I mean, uh, 
I think it's it's civilizational the the the, the conception that, that that conservatives at the end have, and and the the kind of more cosmopolitan libertarians don't have a civilizational narrative in the sense that you know it's one civilization against other. It's more of a, a human civilization and that is kind of a, a, a you know a cultural construction and a collective construction rather than, than in an opposition. And I think that that leads to to a lot of elements within the, the libertarian movement being quite curious. And I feel that there are elements also that you know, like people involved in the in the Bernie Sanders campaign, like with the time, uh, with the in the Ron Paul campaign, actually end up in the mm. Bernie Sanders campaign, and you know, eventually move up on a lot of issues. But for example, they didn't move up on, on gun rights, so it's it's not strange to see like. Uh, some you know like more regular socialists like being very like you know staunch supporters of gun rights which is not something that you know like was common uh, some generations ago um i also think that you know like on, on some issues they have you know being on the vanguard i think elizabeth nolan brown with with the with the her staunch defense of of of, of sex worker rights mm. I, I think that's a really interest interesting intersection within within the the left and libertarianism in the sense that you know it, it talks about the worker rights who are you know important for for uh, the left but it also talks about like aut- autonomy which is important for libertarians so i think that's that's a uh, an important issue and i think mm-hmm. that in, in many ways like uh the this kind of 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 of, of elements I, I feel that that are in a in a very different um you know like in a very different frame set i think that it is quite curious because also like it's it's very starkly the 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 difference between libertarians like some have you know uh, endorsed very racist Mm -hmm. and semitic like uh uh conspiracy theories around the pandemic and others have been actually quite constructive in general, even if being staunchly libertarian against kind of, you know, intrusions, but try to be rational. I think in, in some ways it has to do that libertarians in their own way have, you know, by not being like served by, by, I think by the mainstream media in general, they have to construct its own vision. And I think in some ways their, their own vision was, was fairly prudent. I think that you know, obviously, uh, the world couldn't wake up like uh, wait for you know five years for for the vaccines. But at the same time, like it's not like um, like you know, like you're going to put whatever you know. So so there is a need of, of, of having some kind of precaution, you know. And I feel that that is a really interesting kind of contrast. So so yeah, that's are kind of my thoughts on on the kind of diverging. Uh, trends within libertarianism yeah yeah um yeah i um i i saw I, I when you talked about like the mises the mises institute uh my mind immediately went to uh roderick long's um you know left and right uh 40 years later um which is you know like just everything you're talking about like you know he really tries to make explicit uh like the connections and the overlap uh, and like why, you know, uh, libertarians and leftists should work together. And of course, you know, like I write occasionally for <laughs> C4SS, which is, you know, like, uh, the most, like, uh, like it is the, like, uh, bleeding edge of, you know, uh, trying to bring this into existence. Um, I, I, I think like all things considered, like it's actually been like fairly successful, um uh my my friend uh joel who unfortunately he's um stopped doing the non-servian podcast but um uh in the last interview he did for it uh he one of the things brought up was like how it seems that you know the like our outreach campaign is like working um if only uh if only uh no sorry if only insofar as like, you know, now people are like, oh, uh, you know, those damn left market anarchists don't get, you know, like obvious, um, 
like it, it's like it's like you know like the it, like the, the it's not just like you know they ignore us it's it's now that they make like you know really bad arguments against us uh which you know that's something i'll, I'll take it um yeah so, uh, uh i yeah also yeah this so the split between um uh the split between like you know uh cosmopolitan and like more parochial or nationalist um versions i think it's really interesting that like you can make a pretty good case that like uh this is something that also played out in the socialist movement um like in you know um uh leading up to like world war one um like ostensibly like a lot of socialists we you know like paid a lot of i don't want to say lip service but like it, it was more like you know like the uh figureheads and like you know the publications of the movement were like you know all about internationalism um and there were like some ways that you know they were really internet like they you know practiced what they preached but like you also had this you know uh dark side of um like you know uh they like you know marx's predictions about like you know the working class uh realizing you know it had to abolish private property the world over weren't coming to fruition and so you know they had to make compromises and like some of those compromises were like you know um uh connecting with like nationalist like you know feelings among the population to win votes um and of course uh that that turned out to be incredibly problematic uh in like with world war one because uh you know uh like all these socialist parties like they were like yeah you know we're not gonna you know um we're not gonna like all go on strike to prevent the war from breaking out because you know there's like the like industrial uh machine that is you know producing and moving things for people to go fight each other um like you know they they could have if if like they really tried they could have like brought that down but they didn't and um part of the reason why is just you know uh it wasn't just like they would face backlash from like you know uh, the state and like elites and whatever it's also that they would face internal backlash from you know the nationalist elements within their own movement um and you know that's that's a particularly stark example and um you know the libertarian movement for better or worse has never uh, like attained that sort of uh influence and like capacity such that it had to made like make like those trade-offs but um i think um you know, you were talking about Tyler Cohen talking about how fusionism is dead. Um, I think that had the fusionist project continued and had libertarians like actually commanded a significant portion of the population, I think they would have had to make like those sorts of uncomfortable trade-offs. Um, yeah. So what do, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's really interesting because I feel that immigration has been central. Like, uh, obviously, like the more cosmopolitan libertarians have uh, a much more open view of, of immigration, generally open borders, and and and, and the more poly libertarians in general have a very restrictive vision. Although there are some exceptions, uh, I I do think that there are some non-woke libertarians that are i think are relatively principled even though they you know are i mean i think Garg has mentioned that mm. you know sometimes religious people can be relatively you know not relative even radically committed to to a kind of uh of, of pluralism but at the same time like in you know at, at, you know kind of in some way um uh, understandable like they also mentioned their personal positions to certain things but but on immigration i think that it's, it's slightly curious that i i will say some of, of of the libertarians that are not necessarily like uh more cosmopolitan do have some some slightly uh more uh sympathetic view to, to immigration mm. um even if in order is, uh, I, I, I do think that while on principle, like it's still uh, defendant, they, they generally tend to have more moderate views. I, I do think that, however, uh, the 
the issue is, I think that in some ways more than borders, uh, one element that I think is, is key is to, to understand, I, I think one of the secrets about the, the war of American politics is that a lot of, of, of conservative think tanks are staffed by libertarians, which mm. I think has a lot of explanations. Yeah. Um, you know, one of them is that libertarians despite a lot of things that they say against college, many go to college, mm. even if to study like more uh, economics rather than or things that are more common majors. But uh, I think that that kind of explains why, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, think tanks had a, had a lot of libertarians for, for a while mm. at least. Uh, and maybe there are some still that remain. And, you know, obviously Cato Institute has a lot of, of weight on, on Washington DC. So, so I think that even beyond its own numbers, I, I think that you are seeing, you know, kind of uh, different shifts in in, 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 in in the way how people perceive libertarianism. And mm. also I think that there is a, an, an interesting sense, like uh, if one is interested in electoral politics, for example, like, you know, a case like Colorado where Jared Polis is the governor, like, Libertarians seem pretty okay with him. Like mm. he was the only governor to to abolish qualified immunity, I think, uh, hmm. in in the U.S., which is interesting. Um, so I, I think that you know, like uh, there is, I will say, a very curious mix. And, and, and when you mention like uh, you know socialism, Marxist, I will say something that that maybe it could surprise some people, but. Hmm. Um, I will say some market socialists, the more extreme ones, actually are wide open to to talk about the, the destruction of the state. You know, hmm. in a in a short period of time, hmm. even like in, in in talk about like you know like moving on without the state. And I think it, it's quite curious, but I do think it has an explanation. Uh, and I think that it has like I feel that the topic that hasn't been too much discussed is like the impact of market socialism within Latin America mm. that already had its kind of sympathy for the free markets, but from the left, which mm. uh, it sounds kind of strange, but <laughs> Tr I, trust I me, trust me. Sorry, sorry. Ways, Can I just yeah. interject? Yes, it sounds strange to most yes. people. My audience, however, is a very strange audience, so they will probably find it normal. Uh, sorry, <laughs> just wanted to interject. I, I know that you know, but continue. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, 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 yeah, with with that in mind, I think that maybe that's that's a, a curious element that sometimes gets. Uh, I think that there is some elements that are quite curious because uh, when one thinks about it, like um, the the issue with with the uh, you know like a lot of people that end up you know in the in the marxist movement end up there because they were kind of rebels in, in their own way mm. and and you know like and with the time they moved to to things that were difficult to describe i, I mean one of the pioneers of, of the gay liberation movement in 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 latin america was an argentinian poet called uh, nestor Perronger, and he he came from the trotsky's left and hmm. and you know with time he was expelled from from the, from the uh, from from his party the socialist workers party I think uh, or, or the, like uh, in in Argentina uh, work, workers party uh, it's uh, uh, in Argentina so he he got expelled hmm. uh, he ended up you know like in 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 in, in Brazil like he was more of a social anarchist in some way. Hmm. And then he got a spell there also. He, he then like joined gay liberation organizations and he also got a spell because he was too radical. So I, I think he was too radical for, for all the groups. But I think what if one reads what, what is in, in the score of his thinking is, you know, like he believed like people, you know, like there should be a, a radical fight against homophobia because it was a, a constraint against liberty. But, you know, he also think that that struggle shouldn't stop at, at one's borders because desire doesn't stop at, at one's borders. And I think that's really important if one thinks about family, like, uh, separations, because, like, what that makes is, is, is break up families, like, like break up, you know, like, not just families, like partners or different kind of, that because of, of, of kind of bureaucratic laws have to, you know, in some cases, like, some countries, like, despite a, uh, a lot of times is a lot of talking about like uh, 
uh, uh, inclusion and, and the value of diversity. In some Western countries, it's still the poor people that are claiming uh, asylum because they, they are, you know, having uh, attacked or persecuted because of, of, of their sexual orientation. So I, I think that, you know, represents kind of, of, of how, uh, you know, like there were people that even before, I think issues like immigration became a, a bigger here in Latin America. We're seeing that as, as, a, as a kind of, of central, and I kind of this this idea that 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 there is something beyond like kind of the traditional topics, but but it's still like like push you know like the idea of workers' power and things like that. So so I think it is interesting. Um, other thing I I will add is that. Uh, an element that sometimes gets missed is that uh, I feel that in some ways, like the 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 fusionism show its limits. Uh, I, I do think that that the you know like uh, elements like you know it has been you know some months ago like people were saying you know like when the games happened like the. Uh, the the stock buying happened and and they, oh, yeah. they banned like the buying stocks like you know like people saying you know capitalism is not free markets and and I think that has become much more common you know to say even among more regular socialists I think that that distinction between free markets and and capitalism I think is important but also I I think there is a need to to have an anthropological understanding of, of the market because like it like the people sometimes forget but the the, the 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 Arab Spring happened basically because uh, a street seller, you know, like uh, set him on fire because, like, you know, they have, you know, like uh, they got his staff, and you know that was, you know, like uh, as a street vendor, he didn't have that much capital, so he, mm. it it was a, a, an act of protest that sparked a movement that that. To many, is still like is a, a continuous movement mm. that has tried to bring change in many different ways, and and, and certainly has been trying to to be pushbacks. But it, it it was the start of something, and I think if people just are with the attitude of, of you know like kind of uh, of uh, you know everything related to markets is kind yeah. of you know like uh, the devil or something, yeah, 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 it yeah, is yeah. going to be very reductive. Is yeah, 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 and, and the complexity of the world. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, I actually, I'm actually writing something on this. I, <laughs> it's funny. I've like promised like three different people over the years. They're like, oh, you should, uh, you should like write something on Marxism. Cause you know, like you like have critiques of it. Uh, I'm like, yeah, I should. And then like, I go to write something on Marxism. I'm like, shit, I've got to like, you know, like, trace out this giant philosophical um like 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 these you know pretty like fundamental uh philosophical like debates before like i can you know actually just say okay like your assumption here is wrong um yeah so um that that look forward to that it's it's hopefully going to be dropping next year i've written um like a couple thousand words on it um but yeah i think i think you know there to get like to be like a little more casual about this um yeah i think that um there's just this like it's it's really unfortunate this like sort of desire uh to just uh treat like everything that you know is associated uh with the bad people as bad and unredeemable um because it, it also just like hurts your ability to like you know uh do actual science which is supposedly the point of like your entire movement um <laughs> sorry uh do, do you have any thoughts about that <laughs> yeah I, I mean i think that in some ways, uh, and, and and maybe we we could connect this with with Latin America. Mm. I I do think that there is a, a something that that is really um, interesting. That I I do feel that in some ways in Latin America we are seeing kind of the caricature of libertarianism. Like uh, you know there is a Javier Milei who is an elected. Uh, uh, 
politician in Argentina who is literally like he calls himself an ANCAP and a <laughs> narco capitalist. Like he, he in 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 one anime convention went dressed as a, as a you know like kind of as an ANCAP superhero. Like oh my god, it, it was like weird. Uh, but I mean, like one member of, of, of his coalition, like you know, it's it's pro life, and, and I think it's like and I was elected on his list. So in Argentina, that you have. Uh, like kind of list uh, of, of, of candidates, and and mm. I think it is not something someone that you know is considered that libertarian. Even some people consider that the other member of his list that got elected is slightly more libertarian than him because he is less of a grifter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he, this guy is completely a, a grifter, and and I think it's it's it's. Uh, I think in some ways it, it has it it there is a. I, I think there is some some truth to what uh, a Peruvian political scientist uh, Farid Gahad said a while ago that in Argentina like a lot of the coverage to to this candidate was because you know he he talked about low taxes he talked about a lot of the more conservative traditional rhetoric but with a kind of aesthetic sense that it was the different kind of you know like and an ANCAP in a in a anime convention is certain different than you know like kind of your average conservative but. At the same time, I don't think, like, you know, like, I think Trotsky's did a, a good election and people weren't talking about them, despite mm-hmm. having much less resources, you know, not being on TV on the, all the time. I, I do think they have done quite well. So I, I don't know if, if they are the biggest story, but something the media wants to them to be. And I think it is curious because uh, in... in, in in Latin America, certainly, like the the in, the the curious part is that the people that were libertarians were not necessarily anti-imperialists, or mm. many of the right libertarians were not necessarily anti-imperialists. Sorry, so sorry, sorry, sorry. That was already. A... Um, just one question: What does anti-imperialism mean in the context? Is that just like resisting American influence? I think that that will have been the traditional definition. Uh, the the more Trotsky definition will be near Washington, near near uh, Moscow, near the regime. But 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 I think that the the kind of more um, classical was uh, you know against a kind of American hegemony. So I think to some degree they already had proof that they were kind of willing to to work with with the system to some degree, like unlike. You know, even in in Spain, I, I think you you find like libertarians having a, a conservative libertarian having a much more conventional, uh, you know, like polar libertarian view that you mm. know imperialism is bad, like and things like that. So, uh, but yeah, I think in Latin America, like there there was a dependency uh, on libertarianism that that I think it's 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 uh, it's quite complex to analyze because I think a lot of the funding also come from from the U.S. So. I mean, there is this direct relationship. Uh, I do think that that, um, however, like I think that the value of things about I think that one could learn from libertarianism in Latin America are things like El Alto. I think like it's uh, and and Chase Walker of, of Reason Magazine has a bridge about it. Like really, one of my favorite articles of the whole time because. El Alto, I think it's an example, like mm. which is a city in Bolivia, which is basically a, 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 an, a, an entire city and a street market, which is a, a majority indigenous city yeah. that that is a, a, a staunch uh, uh, anti-regulation. Like you go buy everything there, like yep. like from you know like regular stuff, like you know like uh, uh, I don't know. Um, you know, a t-shirt to two guns, like it, it's 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 the like kind of a, a libertarian utopia in itself, and I think, um, yeah, I, I mean it's completely crazy. I, I remember like hearing that that once someone saw a, a an airplane um, motor being sold there, like. I don't know how they got it, but yeah, it, it's it's like these stories are wild. Like everything you think you don't going to find, you're going to find there. Uh, and it's it's and i think also interesting is is the kind of sense of 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 uh, of solidarity that are 
between the, the, the communities, we are heavily indigenous. Also, the sense that it has, you know, empower uh, the, the indigenous identity, the, the Cholets, we are this kind of uh, very curious architecture and style that has come out uh, of the prosperity of, of the city, you know, is, uh, is a really interesting example of, of how you know, radical markets, uh, you know, like can, can provide kind of more uh, you know, like uh, prosperity, even if there are a lot of challenges, and mm. certainly there, are, there is, uh, it's not as egalitarian as probably even they themselves would like it. But yeah, I, I yeah. do think that you know that that is a, a radical example, and I think sometimes it gets missed, like things like El Salvador, because like you know <laughs> this this uh, millennial president like uh, goes with with you know saying you know like we are pro Bitcoin, but we are forcing everyone to accept Bitcoin, and it's kind of difficult. The issue is not because people are, you know, not that tech savvy. I think that, you know, mm. I, some something that I have mentioned uh, a while ago was that I think that, you know, like kind of jikiness and uh, brown and black jikiness has been kind of a um, an avoided issue for different reasons. Sorry, I, I sorry, you're that, saying geekiness, but. Yeah, I mean, yep. like, kind of the the ability to 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 kind of you know, like, I think like sometimes it is yeah, like misunderstood how a lot of the piracy needs actually like people having knowledge of of informatics things like that. Mm. It's not you know like as simple because you have to like people do do it themselves. Like it's uh, um, so you, you I mean like. It is a complex process. It's not as simple as, as people think. So, it's not necessarily the problem like the that it's going to be that hard. Although obviously people uh, uh, that are more old and don't have an iPhone or or a, you know or an even a, uh, or a, or a you know a more recent phone. It's I mean there are people that still have like the old phones here in Latin America. So. It's it's going to be complicated, like to 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 use the technology, but even if the technology kind of is there, like the internet connections are pretty bad, you know. Like uh, so, forcing people, I don't think that's kind of an example. Even if cryptocurrencies are kind of, uh, uh, I think in some ways are are leading to to interesting uh, paths. I think that in some ways cryptocurrencies are pushing toward you know, like the criminalization of sex work and also the criminalization of drugs. So in some ways, I, I agree that there is some libertarian element of, 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 of cryptocurrencies, but kind of, uh, of forcing people to try to accept it, I, I think it, it, it goes to the same sense of, of the problem with fiat currency, kind of the, I think even Paul Krugman said that, you know, like without like, uh, you know, the, an army, like what, what will be <laughs> fiat currency? So, so yeah. Um, I, I think that, uh, there, there is a sense, I think, regionally, particularly in Latin America, where I think there is a relatively libertarian rhetoric from the right, which I think it's explained because, uh, unlike you know, like uh, unlike uh, Europe, you know, uh, or to some degree other parts of you know, like the the West and you know the U.S., um, there is not like Latin America is the only region where there haven't been like a. a uh, a terrorist attack by uh, an Islamic organization. So this kind of sense that, you know, like in, in, in Europe, they rely like against Islam, but here there are very few Muslims. Like hmm. That's interesting. I haven't, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, it depends from country to country, but uh, they are fairly normal. And, you know, like, the, so I, I think that, you know, like this kind of boogeyman is, is not, you know, like that common. So the second issue of immigration is, 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 it's quite curious because in, in recent times, like there has been immigration from Venezuela to to to, to most countries, uh, from Haiti mm. to some countries like uh, like Chile, like uh, Brazil, and, and and like Mexico. But um, I, I do think that that, however, a topic in some countries, um, it's it it hasn't catching on completely because uh, like for example uh, they don't go to central america basically because their, their economic situation is already bad so the only kind of unifying uh, force in latin america is the anti -com in, in the right is the anti communism mm. and i think that explains the libertarian rhetoric even if 
many of those politicians are not the libertarian. I think mm-hmm. that in some ways Latin America is the future because like in, I think Bolsonaro in some ways represented this kind of, of, of right-wing nationalist that, mm-hmm. that somehow for moments also sounds libertarian, which is is weird like but in a right libertarian sense but still which i think reminds of trump which was mm. uh, quote unquote super capitalist but at the same time like he he sounded pro like yeah uh, kind of I, much less radical on, on, on the... yeah 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 i mean like the thing of trump is like i'm pretty sure you know you can if if like in 2016 when he still wasn't president you could like in his like campaign speeches you could probably like find audio that you could use to build a case that he like supported pretty much well like i'm sure there's like some positions but like a vast range of positions you could find um audio uh of him to support and um yeah i think i think like yeah actually so going back um you you like uh like uh, a couple of minutes ago you you were talking about like one thing one of the things you mentioned was how um like a lot of american conservative uh think tanks are run by libertarians or people who are inclined to libertarian politics and i think i think that's really important uh i think like one thing that uh i saw talked about in like the in like trump's rise and like the whole sort of fusionist project uh falling apart that i think is accurate is like you had this sort of you had like what you know the like elite republican establishment believed and then you had what the actual people believed and they were like pretty divergent um and the only reason that like that no one noticed was um just like there wasn't there weren't ways for like the masses to express themselves i guess uh because um in terms of like political activism you know they just didn't for whatever reason they didn't have like the capabilities to build like independent organizations to the republican party and so it was only when someone like trump came along and was like, yeah, fuck you. Uh, I'm like, a, you know, a boorish billionaire who like might be doing this for, for publicity. And then, you know, you end up like fucking uh, like drifting into like actually doing it for reals because why the fuck not? Um, yeah. Um, that, that like really just collapsed the um, like the pretense that uh you know like the base and the elites were like aligned on these issues um but then of course you know and like if you if you follow like if you look at like what like you know hard reactionaries who like you know want like awful awful things and like thought there was a possibility that trump could bring it about uh if you look at like what they what they have said about the whole thing they're like yeah like you know um like the, the like a bunch of stuff the guy said like was you know pretty to use their word uh based but um you know in terms of like people like he he had to you know like draw on like all these you know uh non-based uh like uh you know uh spe- like specialists you know like run the government or you know like think tanks to like draft policy and so, like, he ended up, uh, in many ways, just sort of being uh, a normal Republican president, which isn't great, but uh, he wasn't, like, you know, the fucking nightmare monster who was like, yeah, like, I will pay the I will pay the legal fees of people who, like, beat up reporters at my rallies um, that he was in the primaries. Um, and, and, like, the reason why is just, like, you know... <laughs> um this like this like um i guess i guess like organic um like base didn't have like you know the infrastructure both in terms of like you know ide- ideology but also in terms of like people with you know the knowledge to run the complex machinery of government to like make make 
their reactionary fantasies happen. Um, and like, if you look at like, um, if you look at like, oh, um, there's, I can't remember his name, Tan- Tanny Greer, who's like a uh, center right um, policy guy who like does a lot of stuff on foreign policy, but he's like written some pretty good, he's written like some pretty good analyses of uh, American conservatism, especially like younger conservatism. Um, he's got this piece on his blog called um, uh, Conservatism's Generational Civil War, where he talks about how like, um, you know, uh, people like Bronze Age pervert, um, who I, I, I feel like you you know who that is, right? You're, you're online enough for that to be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. He's, he's talking, you know, about how like, um, like explicit fascists are like, you know, their 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 ideas, uh, um, you know, uh, what like young conservatives are picking up on, uh, not like you know these um like really wonkish, uh, like policy books that you know just like he, like his point is like you know like these things just like don't actually get at what is actually motivating young conservatives, which is like a reaction to all of the social progress that has happened in like the last um, like couple of years since like the proliferation of the internet. Um, and like, you know, obviously I, I think that progress has not gone far enough, but I, at the same time, like it is undeniable that it is ha- has happened. Um, and, and, and that like, it is like the, you know, like, Obviously, you can compare it to like the 1960s or whatever in terms of like upheaval, but um, it like the like the the like I I don't know the exact history of this, but my my intuition is like uh the like the changes of the 60s um were like far more abrupt like you no know, they like. It, like things sort of like like for for average people it was like a difference but it wasn't as um it wasn't as sharp um and and like what 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 ended up happening well like there was there was still like yeah i don't know enough about the con- the history of the conservative movement but like my my guess is is that like there was still this sort of sense that uh the the like the things that you know gave people meaning like were intact enough uh, like i mean obviously they were like you know um like the victory of like you know richard nixon and like ronald reagan like they, they proved that you know these like visions still had like purchase and um like tanny greer's point is like um you know they they increasingly don't um especially you know if like if you look at like it's it's really funny like you know uh you might remember like a couple years ago there were the um like you know figures i guess you'd say they were on the alt right uh like i i think particularly like paul joseph watson who's a fucking idiot uh but he was like yeah you know like the like gen z is going to be like all based and red pilled and like you know now it like it's like come out that like you know a ridiculously high percentage of them are like bisexual and like they are even more progressive on like a whole bunch of issues than millennials were at least according to polls um and so i like i can understand in the face of that why like especially especially if like you know you think that the republican establishment is like just sitting on its ass and like doesn't really get what's up uh, why you'd go to like such extreme uh, like places? Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry that that was really rambly. But um, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I mean it it has made me think about you know there there has been a lot of talk about you know like uh, that Trump was like a Latin American dictator like Mm. and it's funny because in some ways a lot of latin american dictators were were imposed by the u.s and Mm. and in some ways like you know like uh, trump had a much more 
stark relationship with the war, like you mm. know, like much more transactional than, than yeah. any other politician. I do think that in some ways, and I think that we, we could, uh, I think it doesn't have been talked that much, you know, like the issue of the cities, like, uh, you know, the special economic zones, mm. I don't think it's that different, like, you know, to, to be honest, from the United Fruit Company, at least in the mm. form that is now, which, uh, you know, some of the initial backers of the program has, have backed it off. So... I think that in, in many ways, you know, what, what, what we are seeing in Latin America is that despite, you know, like kind of this, uh, this sense of, of, uh, you know, of, uh, of, of, you know, kind of unity in certain way in the message of the, of the, of the, of the conservative movement in Latin America that has kind of a more unified message. Mm. I think it's a much more decentralized message of, of the Latin American left, which has won the day at the end. And I think that's curious because I, I do feel that in, in many ways there, there is a, a backlash against, you know, like kind of the the parties that were in power, which mm. explains why, you know, in, in, in Peru, like Castillo won and in, 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 in Chile recently, like uh, also... Um, uh, Gabriel Boric won on, on Undu in Honduras also like uh, Xiomara Castro won uh, and and I think it it there are uh, high probabilities that you know in Colombia the left will won and, and in, in 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 Brazil also there there could be a victory because the the right has like been very incompetent in handling the pandemic but I also think there is something uh, that that I think it's, it's not times not a lot of times understood which is that the always an element like healthcare you know like it's it's not you know a free market in any mm. way yeah because a lot of the policies you know throughout latin america basically did you know like force you know like not open hospitals like created you know the need of uh, 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 uh the creation of, of private clinics, which uh, raise the prices. And the, the curious thing is that in, in some ways, like people talking about medical tourism, uh, it, it was true. Like, for example, in Peru, there were uh, people that, 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 that came, uh, uh, you know, to, to treat themselves on, on private facilities because, mm. but uh, so, it, it, I mean, there is medical tourism in, in Switzerland, but I, that's more high scale. But the issue mm. is even like in order for someone to to travel from from the U.S. to 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 Peru, it still has to have some budget. Uh, so, I feel that in in many ways, um, uh, the the needs of 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 uh, of, uh, of a dysfunctional. Uh, uh, system were never fulfilled and 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 the left appeared to to you know in a very heterodox way obviously like pedro castillo is a a, a peasant uh, elementary teacher from <laughs> rob rue and and you know like uh, gabriel boric is a uh, was a, a leader of the student movement obviously they have very different views of the war one is a like Pedro Castillo likes to 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 dance to folkloric music. Like uh, Gabriel Boric likes uh, to listen to Taylor Swift and, and Tool. Like so, obviously, like they, they have very different you know like views in many things, but they are you know like opposed to 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 what they see as neoliberalism, which I, I think it has peculiarities in in each country, but it still has you know its its own. Um, its own dimensions, and I think the issue that 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 I feel that it is, it has been shown is the right has a much more uh, conventional frame set in Latin America. So it, it has been a, a very kind of trying to use the same card. So a lot of the counter campaign against against uh, against Pedro Castillo in the second round in Peru was very similar to the the campaign against mm. uh, against uh, Gabriel Boric. Mm. Uh, and I think it is interesting because, you know, other cases in Latin America are, are also interesting, like Honduras. You know, in Honduras, the center of Xiomara uh, Castro was uh, an anti-corruption campaign. Uh, you know, like, uh, I think even American publications have uh, published that, you know, their former conservative president was accused 
of being actually, you know, in alliance with the drug cartels. So um, I don't know if he's going to be prosecuted, what's his, his destiny, but uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very curious. Like, uh, uh, I, I feel that, you know, like in, in many ways in, in Peru, like it was kind of, a, uh, you know, like the idea of, of no, no, uh, no poor people in a, in a rich country, which had talk about, you know, natural resources. And in, mm. in the case of, of Boric, it kind of talk, uh, you know, like uh, in some ways to, 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 you know, an end of an era, like the, the, the era of Pinochet that has, you know, like um, maintained a lot of, of issues. Like people sometimes forgot that Chile was one of the last countries in Latin America to approve the, like, the divorce laws, like in the 2000s. Like, hmm. so it was not that much time ago. Like, that Chile was the most conservative country in Latin America, mm-hmm. and, and and people sometimes could be surprised that one of the countries that you know like uh, uh, was quick to 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 approve divorce laws was Bolivia, because um, the church there is not that strong. And for example, Argentina like approved in the 80s, like. So I believe I think between the 30s and 40s, because like the, the since the church was not that strong, like the, the liberals kind of pushed it, and 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 it, I think it, it it is kind of complex because obviously it's a region that has many things in in common, and I think that the pink wave have many uh, difference, mm. um, but. I do think that you know, in some ways, uh, we, within this difference and, and within this kind of uh, of 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 of, uh, of elements, I feel there are there is a lot to criticize, but there is a lot to 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 have in mind. I think that uh, Brazil has done a, a great job, like constructing a very high quality, like uh, higher education system, like mm. uh, on some issues, like like paleogenetics, which is very complex because like mm. you need. You need for paleogenetics. You need to have someone who has a, a very broad knowledge of history, anthropology, yep. archaeology, um, a, a, a genetics, and statistics, which is a really kind of complicated. Like, yep. uh, I mean, it's it's it, it takes a lot of talent to for someone to have those this kind of combination of knowledge, and and they have do, done a lot to 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 study uh, the the genetics not only of Brazil, which is a, a fairly diverse country, but uh, most of Latin America, um, and in other fields, also in, in, in astronomy, mathematics, uh, mm. they are doing a lot of uh, uh, in chemistry, physics. Mm. They are doing really interesting stuff, uh, and and I think in in other countries like uh, Ecuador, like uh, it's true that now it has kind of a right wing government, but uh, the years of, of Korea were years of kind of try to to expand the, the functionality of the state. Hmm. Which I think was an important element, and and I think uh, you know that that has led the Latin America and Ecuador has a quite high you know also vaccination rate. Latin America relatively has a quite high vaccination rate. I uh, I was talking earlier like today that like, someone was that you know I I think it has to do with with social issues like hmm. because a lot of families are quite large and live together. So even if you're not the biggest fan of vaccines like yep. you're kind of going to get vaccinated in order to you know not uh, you know infect your family within your household yes so uh so i i think that you know there are a lot of elements that are kind of you know like contradictory and, and then at the same time like mm. uh living at the same time and i think that, that like the idea that i always have is latin america is the future because mm. um in some ways like if we talk about immigration like uh potosi is probably the, the most clear example of, of kind of you know the the, the 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 kind of contradictions like because at one point like potosi is the the silver mine that was legendary in in, in colonial times it's still going on in, huh. in Bolivia, also in much smaller scale but uh it, it was at one point i uh as the largest silver mine in the war and many people traveled there to 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 you know to try to to become rich and you know like were a lot of a lot of the of people were basque so not even like the regular spaniards uh but there were germans there were french there were flemish there were mm. a lot of ethnicities that are quite complex to 
to the scribes and so on as not an anthropologist but uh and there were visitors like people that just wanted to see like yep. this you know like literal el dorado but for for silver and you know like visitors from from the middle east like and and you know like the, there were kind of this street markets and 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 it is like radical in in a and and, and you know like kind of uh Indigenous people, particularly the Aymara, the Potosi was in the Aymara realm, so who worked as a as miners, kind of in in a way generated a lot of the the wealth of the city, but in some ways also helped to consolidate the Aymara identity as one of the strongest identity hmm. uh, in in the Andean region and in Latin America as a whole, and I think that also that led to you know the the African uh, metallurgists, like mm. so the people that make the coins were you know African, mm. and and a lot of you know like as I mentioned like you know like uh, people that came from the Spanish Empire but even from outside of it. So it is a complicated relationship since it was a, a colonial city, but at the same time in some ways was at the center of the war, mm. and I think that's kind of could sound contradictory. But I think also like this kind of cosmopolitanism of, of of relatively tolerance was was able to coexist with with a staunch uh, religiosity and a staunch hmm. inequality and I and and a staunch also ecological degradation. So hmm. so I think it's a warning for the future because a lot of things that 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 could be hopeful also could come with things that are not hmm. so hopeful. And I think that's a really important challenge to to to, to take in mind because I, I do feel that uh, you know when when people talk about the environmentalist movement, I think mm. it's very broad, and I mm. think some of it is kind of unhinged in some way, yeah. in the sense that I feel that there are like indigenous people say you know we want to be part of the conversation, and maybe some people. Um, will you know like uh say some positive things but then like kind of forget and and, and this is like the ngos that are mm. bigly funded you know like one of their goals was to try to stop like countries in the indian region from buying uh um uh, uh air conditioning in, mm. in in public schools so I, I mean they they were saying it was going to generate contamination but you know like golf course generating contamination like <laughs> kids not you know like because like even then the region like you know people will say oh but isn't the other region like cold uh, but you know the cost is not cold like the, mm. the cost uh, reaches extreme temperatures and and even in Bolivia like the tropical parts it also reaches extreme temperatures so it's it's not yep. it's it's kind of needed like uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but the issue I think it's it's uh, it's a uh, it's a kind of complexity of yep. very different demands uh, i think that you know in some ways if one sees someone like boric you know like i think he represents more or less the whole package of, of kind of social progressivism and economic progressivism mm. but at the same time on some issues I, I do feel that you know like there there isn't a recognition of, of some elements that some politicians not as woke as, as him have done like for example like the 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 one the first politician to promote a, a plurinational constitution was Evo Morales one of their issues is, is much controversial but I, I do think there was a, a sense of trying to recognize the, the kind of you know like uh, plurinationality that exists you know not only in Latin America I mean many parts of the world that you know like most of the countries are not nation states mm. despite you know the narratives try right, yep. to, to to be created around it um i do think that you know like the failure particularly of of, of bolsonaro to to have any kind of, of of even like normal like latin american government but just a chaotic one like you know like uh have really affected the prospect of the right which explains why you know like even mexico which I don't think it's particularly like uh, I, I don't think, and that's something that that I I will say. I don't think Latin America is particularly progressive in the traditional sense, mm. because Latin America it's still mostly like 
religious, which mm. I think it's a dimension that sometimes is forgotten. Mm. You know, like uh, there was a very powerful picture from from the protests twenty years ago in Argentina um, uh, against the financial reform, and there was a guy, you know, with a giant uh, cross, you know, like and and. You know, and he was protesting a, a right wing government doing financial shenanigans. So it's 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 very different, I, I think that you know, like, but at the same time, in some ways, like the left in Latin America and, and the social movements in Latin America represent, uh, I think, uh, you know, in some ways, like the, the image of of protest is, is is very Latin American. I think that it has to do that there is more international media here mm-hmm. than than in. Than in uh, in parts of the of you know Africa mm. or or the Middle East or or Central Asia or or South Asia or or Southeast Asia, and and that also like Spanish is more easy to 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 get understood by by, by English speakers. So I, I do think that maybe that explains because I was thinking like you know the, the there is a great music video by the Chemical Brothers of Out of Control and and I think. <laughs> If someone watches the music video, like one will see a lot of reference to Latin America, the Zapatistas, like like the Che Guevara T-shirt, like even like the actress that um, the that starred the video, like uh, was Puerto Rican, I, I think. Uh, yeah, so so I think uh, Rosario Dawson, was, yeah, was the actress that. that the start of the video, like it's, it's Puerto Rican. So I think th- this notion of, of, of protest culture as Latin America, I think it's, 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 it's very strong. And in that sense, I think, you know, it kind of protest vote against the right mm. is it, very understandable. So a lot of people are not necessarily that ideological, but I think mm. in many ways they, they, they feel more represented, at least for now, uh, by the left than, than, mm. than by the right. Yeah. Yeah, there was a there was a lot there. Um, yeah, I think um, I want to pick up on your stuff around um, like indigeneity and um, like environmentalism uh, and like the problem, the nation state, and um, that's something that like I've been uh, not not like thinking about, but like more thinking like in that general area i guess um and the reason why is i think um i i think there's you know because i've got so every 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 episode i have to i have to mention james c scott so here's here's your episode uh if you're playing the drinking game uh drink okay so but uh you know his uh he's seeing like a state is um like the the entire point is you know uh certain organizational structures can't handle uh like certain problems at least well uh you know they can certainly try but they don't do a very good job uh and you know you you can i think i think there's like (sighs) you know in this in this age of um you know machine learning and like big data i think i think there's like i think you know uh we are due for an update to that thesis um, because that definitely changes things. But I still think, I still think there's reasons to think that like, you know, just, just cause um, you can automate things. It doesn't mean that uh, the problems of high modernism go away. Um, and I think um, ma- managing these things um, is obviously going to be really, really important in the future uh, in like an increasingly disrupted, and chaotic environment as you know the effects of climate change become worse and worse and like you know like uh like like trade-offs you know like fucking installing air conditioning um and stuff like that uh like that 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 becomes like you know like matter of life or death um so yeah that that's 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 all really important and heavy, um, and I think. Um, but I th- I think what it gets at is um, there's uh, you know, there's like sort of the broader ethical question of like what do we actually want and like what trade offs are we willing to make to get what we want, uh, and what what should we want, uh, and and that's all really important, um, 
and you know like stuff like what you were talking about how like you know there's like problematic aspects to the environmental movement and yeah like you know um that there's like you know like (laughs) obviously like really crazy extremes you can take it you know where you um like are like oh yeah like we should abolish language because you know that's alienating us from like our natural state of being and that's what's really like caused caused all the problems um (laughs) Um, you know, obviously, like only like a small minority of people actually believe that, but you know that that's like one like hard extreme you can go. Um, and I think um, I, I I don't know if I'd agree with you that Latin America is the future. Um, I think I think it is a future, and I think it definitely. Uh, I think I think people should like take it seriously, um, but I think I think like I think like people should take like, and this is you know like impossible, but you know you should still give it a shot. I think people should like take the entire like world seriously because um, it's it's not it's not just like one country or region that's going for our people right now. Uh, it's like seemingly everywhere, and I think um. I, I, I think that like all the various ways that people are coping with this and like trying to make things work, I think are worth uh, considering. So yeah, that's, that's what I'll say on that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I was trying to say Latin America is the future in the sense that, you know, when, when I think there is a, you know, comparison of global South, the global North, it's, it's mm. kind of being, kind of negative you know like and i think in some ways like you know when i was saying you know about about potosi you know like in, in some ways like the the wealth of of, of, of the andes and and uh, latin america kind of you know was was fundamental to globalization and curiously like uh, we were talking about the Russians, like mm. never kind of acknowledged that and you know many have a quite bad view of latin america mm. um i think that um the the interesting element is that uh, as you mentioned like you know the 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 contradictions of the environmental does movement is is quite high you know and you see i think korea like in, in ecuador mm. was maybe the most uh, you know kind of classic example of that because like he was someone who in a lot of senses took a very kind of progressive uh game but he was a, a staunch extractionist so he was you know pro pro oil and you know his the recent candidate from you know Correismo from the political movement he represented was also pro destruction of, of the new discoverer like golden mines so uh, i mean i i do think there is a complexity in the sense that you know sometimes like it's even like people from the region that want to extract those resources but sometimes like people don't want to extract the resources mm. want to continue to to and and they are not given any choice and and that also happens in some way in 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 in, in Bolivia. Hmm. Uh, even if Evo has a much more staunch, you know, uh, pro-indigenous rhetoric, um, but as I mentioned, like uh, the 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 Aymara are are known for for being miners, and you know, so obviously, like there is a lot of mining is still going on in, in Bolivia, in different forms. Um, and uh, and in many countries in America, I think that there is a very extractivist kind of uh, of left. Uh, I, I do think that that has you know many explanations. Uh, I think that you know in many ways the Latin America to a large degree is still like it's it's driven uh, like the commodity sector is, 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 is you know of extraction of natural resources is still central like. Some countries have diversified more, but uh, but it still are very central. I mean, like uh, an example is may, maybe in, in an extreme is Venezuela. Like you know, so the the oil industry fell. You know, the entire country mm. fell. Like and, and yep. because of that, there is a massive refugee crisis around uh, a, lo- a large part of Latin America. Many Venezuelans are trying to go to 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 the U.S. also to to Europe. Um, I, I think that uh, the, the the crisis is, is very complex because I, I think <laughs> that I agree with with, with you that that uh, 
in some ways it's not just one region is the entire world uh in central asia it's a region i always have been fascinated for for different reasons uh, but um i mean like i think it like it was one of the highest productions of 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 of, of cotton in the world like mm. uh it is is vital for 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 the global industry this is very important to to the to the development of, of the soviet union uh, and and obviously, like it, it generates also tensions between like the local populations and, and and the Russians when they were kind of running things. So I, I often think that the, this environmental factor is, is very complex because like indigenous people from different regions maybe have different perspectives. But I often think that the the issue that 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 has complicated a lot uh, the the situation. Is drug trafficking because uh, drug trafficking by by the war on drugs making things illegal. Like since it has to be, like it has been like uh, the coca leaves need to to be on, on some parts of the Andes or or, or the Amazon. So uh, there is where there are you know like um, cultivated and and then like the 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 tra- trafficking roads to to North America go go all the way up to Tijuana, so it 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 goes to a lot of, of places, and obviously indigenous populations are in a very kind of dangerous situation, and and they have been you know attacked by many times by 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 drug trafficking guns, also by 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 logging like uh, sometimes informal logging particularly. And and some of these land traffickers, uh, so it's a, a situation of danger in which they are, and they try to preserve nature in a less, I, I would say, less hippie way, like that, you know, because obviously for them their environment, like nature, is their home, you know, in a very pragmatic way. It's literally where they live. So it, it's it, it's it's it, I think it's something that gets too elaborated. I, I think that. Um, uh, Taika Waititi, like the, the the Maori filmmaker, was 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 mentioning this in a in a in a TV interview, like kind of this sense of you know like people think that indigenous people like talk about magical things are kind of shamans, but you know a lot of indigenous people actually like converted to to, to Christianity. So, but the issue is they still want to to live you know where where their 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 they their ancestors live and you know they have still have a connection to. To, to their home, and 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 it is complex because I do feel there there is a need to to understand kind of the the different indigenous traditions, and and I think that 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 should lead us to to I think a, a, a problem that has happened within the left, which is kind of the canceling of anthropology. I think that. Obviously, anthropology is very problematic because it was part of an imperial project trying to classify, you know, like the diverse groups and to, in many ways, uh, to 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 fit a, a narrative, you know, from a nation state, you know, you, these people. Uh, and in in history, Europe, it's crazy. Like, how 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 you're going to distinguish the populations that are exactly the same just because they have a different religion? So it it's it gets crazy. But but also in Latin America, it gets crazy. Um, but, but I think it is it is very much needed because sometimes like you know indigenous knowledge is, is very needed. Like uh, sadly, like the Darien, which is the the region between uh, uh, Colombia and Panama, where 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 a lot of of of, of Haitian immigrants, particularly that come from Brazil uh, to Colombia in order to to move them to to the U.S. or Venezuelan immigrants that go to Colombia in order to move to to the U.S. They end up dying there because it's a very dangerous place. Uh, the the Gunas, who are the indigenous people from from the region, have been living there for for hundreds of years. So they have been adapted to to live there. But regular people, even to this day, are are not able to 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 adapt in a in a in a relatively competent way. And and the humanitarian tragedy of people like Libra and fall into to a river, like because it's a very dense uh, jungle. It, it's it's a very great tragedy and and it has to do that you know like kind of uh, to some degree like you know like the the refusal of, of governments to 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 
to have any kind of, of compassion of any kind. It, it's generating a, a, a really huge humanitarian crisis because it, it's very complex. Like uh, even like I, I'm sure the Gunas, the, there are parts of, of the Darien that 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 are even they are have their own folklore about why why these this parts are kind of dangerous, but it's it's uh, i feel that there is need of, of try to to understand the difference and to and and, and to understand that, that with the difference there could be coexistence but i feel that uh, the the question that that we are seeing is that uh, how you know like the, the there is an environmentalist movement in, in the sense of land protectors that are being killed you know throughout Latin America and other parts of the global south uh, are very different from the NGOs that that get read you on on, on on social media, obviously, and 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 there is a connection. Sometimes there is. I have to say to be very honest about this, and there is some independent media who has been actually much more committed to cover some of these issues than the national media, uh, because sometimes uh, you know, obviously, like uh, the the business interests also want to. Uh, particularly the countries that have formal logging want to to expand the the, the exploitation of of, of of particularly in South America the Amazon. So uh, there are a lot of of of, of conflicting interests that, that make particularly the mainstream uh, local media in Latin America to be kind of quiet on some issues. And and I I think the problem of the more independent media is that it is very limited in its reach. So. Sometimes, if if people outside Latin America get you know like uh, um, uh, a clue about what is happening, is because this activist journalist, which I, I think it's it's a quite important element of, of the of the of the environmentalist movement, and sometimes don't get that much publicity because they not necessarily are you know like uh, trying to to grab you know like the headlines. You know, as as individuals, but try to tell the stories of what is going on, and and I think that's important. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, there was there was a lot there. Um, yes. Um, <sighs> yeah, yeah, you were saying about kind of the the global connections uh, or what yeah. to make friends from different parts of the world i think sometimes what 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 it, i think it's really interesting is that you know like uh, i think india is a really interesting place mm. i think that you know because english language is more common there than in other parts is is much more common for them to 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 write in english and and to so I think that's um, really an important element. Um, I think the yeah, I think Indians are, are really interesting because I think they obviously have a very different view than than uh, than you know what Westerners, what whatever we could say like North America. Europe uh, kind of the have in in a lot of issues, but at the same time they are very aware of 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 of, of kind of the 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 ongoing debates within different countries, uh, particularly the U.S. Uh, I think there are different reasons for that, but you know one of important is that there is a a large Indian diaspora in, in the U.S. where so a lot of people uh, mm. probably know someone who you know like even vaguely related to them, like which lives there. Um, and I, I think that it, it, it is interesting. Uh, I think that there is a really, um, I think there is a Balaji Strasnavadi, who is a, a tech CEO, was saying the other day that I, I think he hopes that, like, why should, you know, all news being based on, you know, like kind of New York's, uh, mm. Brussels, or, you know, like, uh, you know, like that people should should read, like you know, from Sao Paulo, from Lagos, from mm. New Delhi, like, and I think that that's true. I I hope that you know, and, and with with time, you know, like kind of Substack goes to a much more global, uh, 
mm. reach because I, I think you know like kind of you know it try to be contrarian like it's it's kind of getting tired you know I think that something of which is much more needed is kind of have perspective of people who are on the ground which mm. I, I think helps uh, because I, I do think there is a very idealized vision of, of, of the Latin American left and as mm. I have said it's problematic in many ways mm. I, I think that you know in, in indigenous rights like all over the spectrum like if there yeah. is uh, they are quite friendly to 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 extractivist industries that that uh, obviously generate a lot of problems for for the indigenous uh, communities in many cases, um, and and I think you know like also I I have noticed the, the I I follow a lot of Irish people and mm. I think it has to do that they have a, a much more anthropological view of things I think they have a which is is curious because I think that explains why their their left is particular nationalistic even if it's more pro-immigrant than the hmm. left and i think that's interesting also but i think it, they have a much more uh open vision of things uh, i mean like uh you know they they, they they talk about kind of folklore myths you know kind of legends hmm. you know like things that uh, i don't see that many westerners and and i think you know like more normie people like you know like not not the uh, conspiracy theories, but even like you know, uh, uh, you know, someone who was a study in like neurobiology, like <laughs> talks about this stuff. So it's it it's kind of curious. I, I often I think that it's really interesting to meet you know people from different places because mm. I feel in some ways it generates a complexity that makes you understand yeah. that the war like narratives around the war are, are yeah, not yeah, yeah, what yeah. you know like um what the you know it's very far from from reality i i, I do think that you know like um uh the in in some ways i i do think that you know like uh the you know, like I feel that there is a, and I gonna to to say this because it's it's needed. I think that there is an idea that you know, like every person from the global south that is speaking like from uh, in English is, is is because like kind of they are parts of the elite. But uh, something that is very common, like, I follow a, a decent amount of people from Central Asia. Like mm. I follow someone who wanted to to do a semester abroad in 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 in, in, in 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 a western country and you know this person was rejected their visa application you know like this mm. is a serious scholar like you know like and and i was surprised but at the same time i'm and I'm, I'm not that surprised in the sense that sadly like uh, as as uh, an italian said like the us in the us and, and the uk if you're an, an immigrant you're going to have to to get prepared for at one moment, like, uh, and, you know, like, uh, uh, so right-wing nationalists kind of put your immigration status on, 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 on kind of, uh, you know, on limbo. And I think it has to do that, you know, in many ways, if, if you want to, uh, read a lot of stuff about the war like suddenly there are not that many things in in spanish particularly lately uh and i suppose in, in uzbek and in, in other languages because particularly lately like the industrial uh like the the editorial industry it has uh, suffered a lot for the 2008 crisis which led to a lot of books literally not being translated in spanish uh and i i mean like even books like for francis fukuyama like it's mm. so it's not you know like this underground book about like the history of you know i, I don't know like uh, uh as some radical politics Europe. like it, it, it's 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 about um you know like uh literally books that are you know, quite, you know, from authors that are quite famous, and one would think will be translated, but they aren't. Mm. Um, so I, I think there is an, uh, but I think, you know, like in some ways, I, I think this this sense of of, of trying to, to reach like, uh, um, you know, other uh, 
audiences or kind of interactions uh, is led you know to people to 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 speak in english which is becoming in some ways a global language but it, in some ways in a very different way that that i think it, it was intended because I, I think it's also a language of, of rebellion in some ways mm. I, I i often think that sometimes like uh at this point, like the most interesting music in in, in English language is, is 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 written by people who are not native English speakers, <laughs> which I think it's it's quite curious. Uh, there there are plenty of of, of 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 bands from from all over the world that actually at this point sing in English, and mm. and that's really interesting to see in some ways. Like, uh, but at the same time, uh, it, it, it's it's very interesting. I, I think that. That, for example, Brazilians is is a is an interesting people to to reach because I think they not only they are friendly as their reputation, but I, I think they are also you know very interesting because you know it's a country that 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 like Argentina had a massive uh, you know European immigration, but the same country is a is a country that still has a large indigenous population and it mm. still has a large uh, population of African descent, so I think it's a combination of many things, and and I think that's why it's so exciting. Mm. It, it's it's really I do think there is a, a vitality within Brazilians that is really interesting. I think people mm. know about football and you know kind of the you know the beaches, but but obviously Brazil is much more than that. And I think that you know like it, it's pretty clear when you interact with with them. I, I think they're they always tell stories that are very surreal and. Uh, I think that's really interesting. Mm. Um, I, I do think that that there there needs to be to also an honesty on why even some expats have to write in, in English. Mm. Um, so Americans that you know already know the language of the place there are. Um, it's because like journalism and, and sadly outside of the, the English language is very limited, you know, in our language. So it's very difficult to be a freelancer in in in, in Spanish, or or in other languages. So it's much easier than being a freelancer in English. So um, I think, you know, like trying to communicate on with as much people as possible is is, is really something interesting. I, I I'm pretty sure that that uh, you know I'm gonna meet more interesting people on on, on social media, and I hope that yeah. that will be great as as it has been so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, a different example of uh this sort of like you know nuancing and like you know going from like these you know very uh austere theories to like actual practice i think is um can be found if like just reading like history books uh particularly history books that like aren't explicitly ideological and that like are talking about you know just the lives that people did lived in like certain historical moments when you know like um uh like you know these like big world-changing political events were um going on I think is really important because uh, if you do that, you realize that um, like the actual process, the actual like processes that made up these like movements were decidedly not like, you know, uh, this like group with, you know, this ideology that went out and did this thing. Uh, they were like, you know, these complex alliances between like various social groups and, you know, like people, uh, with far more heterogeneous like ideas of what they wanted uh, all coming together and you know you've got like <laughs> you know you've got like hangers on who like you know aren't even interested in like you know the supposed aims but you know are there because it's like this space for you know like people who are different um, like my favorite example is um, again to pull from socialist history is like uh uh, at like the heyday of the workers movement uh at like the turn of the century you know you had on one hand you had like you know this very sort of austere uh like respectability politics a a like aspect to the workers movement you know where workers wanted to prove that they were like responsible enough to run society and you know they were very like uh like their their social norms were, like very conservative and you know like it's the sort of thing like you know today 
uh like it is like the sort of society that like many people on the right would you know think would be absolutely amazing um but on the other hand you also had because like the these were spaces that you know but there were spaces within the movement that were like more open to um like people of like alternative lifestyles you know you had like uh like crazy artists and like you know people with like uh non-traditional um you know gender or sexual identities um you know you had like crazy utopian free thinkers and you know of course you had like athe- like atheists and stuff like that um and i think like i think you know uh there is a tendency on the left to uh even though you know like they will be like i oh, know but we are you know like hard-nosed materialist scientists uh in actuality they tend to mistake you know the map for the territory and they think that you know the world actually works like um you know how it's laid out in what whichever you know big book of theory that they written by a old dead man with a big beard um is correct and they think that 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 is actually the world and they don't like notice that like they, they don't they either don't notice it or like they don't you know emphasize like the sort of bizarre weirdness that and like just uh like social complexity that actually exists uh both now and in the past um and and like and i think um you know uh i think i think like bringing it to more contemporary times um i think like i mean (laughs) social media is you know uh, a very very like it, it is very difficult to say uh, is if it, if it is a net positive or not, but um, I think that I think that it definitely has like uh, this sort of aspect to it, where um, it like it, you know um, it, it it can just like expose you um, to so much, and I think just like the like the really like boring ties of you know just having friends in other countries i think is like really important you know even if you know uh you don't have the like resources to you know uh one day go and see them um like you know i i don't know like i like uh have found myself like uh i don't know like caring quite a bit more about like you know um stuff like transphobia in like the united kingdom uh because i have like trans friends over there and you know i i don't want to see them suffer um and you know like well i can take the perspective of like okay like what do i want like you know um what is my like ideal global society um it it, it, you know it's just it's just also like uh like the visceral motivation of like actually knowing people who have like skin in the game uh, on the ground and who are like actually fighting these things uh makes it like far more real and more importantly uh for people who like you know don't have strong commitments um like that sort of thing i think is really important and really un really like underemphasized. um like the fact that you know you can like i don't know like play video games or like be in like a fandom with other people and you know then like you know uh people within that same group like the the problems that they face like you will be more inclined to empathize with them like across you know borders and boundaries uh than you would otherwise and like you know uh i think you can see this sort of thing in like um uh you know like things like the uh like uh the bts army uh like trolling trump supporters um in like 2020 by like you know uh like spamming their hashtags or like you know booking out a stadium for him uh fraudulently and like stuff like that uh are like small examples of this um and you know one would think that uh you know, if 
like people had more capability to like move across borders or like you know send support across borders uh this sort of thing would matter uh like quite a quite a bit more also you know if like these communities become like more entangled um i think i i like i was talking um uh one of my prior guests uh leaf johnson about this in the context of like um you know uh like protest movements in south south southeast asia uh and like he was lamenting the um you know like the formal international like the formal the the decline of like formal internationalism but i think this sort of like emergent bottom-up internationalism that will hopefully only become more stronger i think that's like far more exciting uh because it's just so much more organic and like actually based in like real the real experience of people uh so yeah what what do you think about that and like do you have any experience with like stuff like that uh i think it's interesting um i I will say that that uh i agree i I prefer this kind of disorganized internationalism than this uh organized internationalism because i i think that you know, I, I think that it, it has been very dumb to call like the protest movements citizens' movements because I, I do think, you know, some consider who consider themselves like as responsible citizens and you know consider some protests are, you know, like responsible demands, but others are demanding the, the impossible in some ways, like and, and are, you know, probably not not like the definition of citizen as, as opposed to the core, like um and I think you know this. This kind of movements are very organic. I remember, like, I, I, I b- last year I was, uh, you know, like uh, there was like uh, the, 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 the Congress removed the president, which uh, Peru is a presidential system, so hmm. uh, it was considered unconstitutional. Even like uh, the Wall Street Journal questioned the move, so. Uh, but I don't think there was narrative, but the, luckily, like, some people were with me and, and, and some people started reading other Peruvians. And I think it it, 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 it it gets on the consciousness, even if I feel that what happened was very organic. But I think there was a need to, to tell the story of, of what it was going on. Sadly, you know, it, it ended up with, with, with two uh, young men dying because of the political repression, many people injured. But it led the government to resign. You know, it was with a lot of kind of uh, COVID, like nineteen, uh, you know, conspiracy theories, and you know, like kind of the new government by the vaccines, and 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 even if the Peru was heavily affected, I, I think it would have been much worse if things have gone in the other direction. Uh, and I think uh, uh, that's the man the impossible because nobody knew when when the protest started what was going to happen, and at the end, like it, the government mm. had to resign because they don't had any support, even from the military, they didn't have hmm. any support. Like so, yeah, it was uh, it was a very intense week to try to 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 transport that. Um, I I feel that you know, like what what you mentioned about BDS, I think it's very interesting how this. This, uh, this 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 issues are are there because I think you know in in, in general like kind of the interest in, in, in you know East Asian culture I, I think it's really interesting as a phenomenon and I remember there was a protest in, in Latin America I, I have said that you know a lot of protests have a lot of, of religious uh, um, um, iconography kind of you know icons in some way and 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 there was a protest with people dressed as Spider Man in the yeah. Uni, which is Uni, is uh, uh, the the uh, the National Engineering University, which is kind of Peruvian MIT. So a lot of the uh, of the students there were protesting against the the, 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 the university president because of allegations of corruption and, and things like that. And, and in one protest, one 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 dude dressed as Spider Man was in a cross. <laughs> so uh, it, it was surreal. I mean, like. It, it was really like, and it was like 15 years ago. Like it was, and I feel a lot of those things are happening now in a much more massive scale. So what we saw in the protests in Chile, which started like with teenage girls, like jumping uh, mm. of the Metro because it was the, the Metro had uh, had a high price. Um, 
it was a massive movement. Also in the process in Peru, a lot of people went in cosplay in the in Southeast Asia. Also, that happens uh, in a lot of parts of the world. I think that you know, kind of this this uh, G culture has been expanded, and you know, kind of mm. these are the, the symbols of protest. Uh, and I think there is uh, some criticism that you know, like uh, that these are symbols that are you know, like are corporate owned, and, and but it, it's precisely like you know, try to appropriate because there are parts of, of, of popular culture, you know, like and and mm-hmm. also like you know, the oldest stories they take back from from popular culture in many ways, like. A lot of the Disney kind of uh, copyright, it, it, it comes from basically stealing stories from yep. European folklore, which, so I, I think it, it, it's kind of a retroactive way, which is kind of complex, but I think it's fascinating. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think there are, you know, certainly very interesting movements in America, like the Zapatistas or, or the uh, in Mexico or the, or the, or, or, or the movimientos uh, in Tierra, the movement of those that you know of the homeless people that are taking back land in in, in, in Brazil, which are really interesting, um, and they are not political parties; they are you know like kind of, uh, of at this point social movements, which is different, and, and their intersections are kind of different. And I think that uh, generates uh, what what I was saying, you know, like uh, demand impossible. Like it's mm. not you know about a a quote, quote unquote rational process. It's about um, you know like kind of dreaming of, of of a better world in some ways, but not in a in a kind of naive way that that you know like uh, because I, I send uh, you know write a a card, you know, like, but uh, it's uh, of, 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 of the power of protest that, that works. And, and now we see in, in Kellogg's in, in the U.S. Mm-hmm. That, that, you know, like the, the strikes working. So so we are, are seeing that, you know, like kind of this intersections of solidarity sometimes are more important than this kind of formal recognition. Uh, because it, a lot of uh, particular Marxist organizations are very sectarian. Um, uh, and and I feel that this kind of, of bottom up uh, kind of, of solidarity is, is going to end up being much more important yep. in, in the long term. Yes, yes, I, I was um, I yeah, I I think that um, yeah, I think I think there's like something really interesting. Uh, like one prediction. Well, no, one one thing that I am kind of staking uh like a lot well i've i've so my my writing um one like implicit prediction in it that yeah, i don't i don't know if it is true but like i guess i it's no it's not a prediction it's a bet but um i think that um i think that like there are deep problems with um the marxist model and um i think that we're going to like I think that the openness of the internet, well, it like, there's obviously, um, you know, benefits to like more structured, um, like learning environments and like, you know, just being around people and all that good stuff. But I think that, uh, I think that like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just say it, stop giving me all these qualifiers. I think that like the sort of assumption of like, the, the Marxist like assumptions uh, in the left that have like significant hegemony, I think are going to like in the, in the next like one or two decades are going to really start to crumble uh, for a variety of reasons. And um, yeah, I think, I think like a lot of, a lot of like what I'm writing and the, like a lot of the, you know, friendships and like connections I've made are like, uh, I guess trying to get ahead of that and like I I really don't want to say like position because like I don't actually expect to you know like get much out of this but it's more I want to like leverage it to like affect things um, and I think I think I think like <laughs> you know you, you mentioned uh, Derek uh, which is Derek Vaughn for probably a guest uh yeah. for you know listeners but um like one, one of the things like you know he's complained about is recently on his uh 
podcast is uh like the failure of um like the american left to like you know uh recognize <clears throat> recognize stuff like the strike wave that happened in the united states um that the, like they were kind of caught off guard by it and um yeah i think like the you know it's it's a, it's a complicated question as to why um but like I, I, I just think that there's it's 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 <clears throat> you know I mean like obviously like Marxists should be like being like oh yeah you know uh, I support the working class but like I think the orientation uh, that a lot of them have towards okay how how do we actually like affect the world um, me, means like they'll miss the this sort of like more bottom up these more bottom up currents because they're they like uh a lot of them are still like really focused you know on like okay uh we need like and and like sorry we need like a organization or like a group that is the party with you know or like capitalized uh to to change things um and i think like Maybe, maybe once upon a time maybe that might have been the correct uh, approach but i think that uh i think that increasingly uh and well not increasingly i think i i think for like quite a long time like you you really like like you can you can see like again it's it's like you know uh the the map is not the territory like th- these assumptions have always been sort of flawed but like you know the the cracks have like you know really been there for like at least at least since the 60s uh if not more um uh but yeah i think um i think like that's one of that's one of the reasons that i'm hopeful that like we can well not we but one of the reasons that i'm hopeful that like the the marxist hegemony uh over the left is like going to uh erode because uh it like just doesn't it like it it, it's it it like if you take it seriously you kind of just like yeah you you, kind of just reach a point where you know it's just like question mark question question mark question mark what do we actually do uh and i think there's like other other like uh descriptions or models of capitalism that uh, actually give you more actionable things to do uh, and that like aren't as liable to break down uh, in the face of changes um yeah yeah i mean what what you're saying reminds me of of something that i was thinking which is uh i, I think that sometimes um there are some Marxist, uh, you know, like traditions uh, mm. that are not, you know, that mainstream. But but I think were really important. Uh, now that I think about it, there was kind of a Marxist collective, which it wasn't a, you know, like kind of a party, but it was kind of a collective of, of, of radical ufologists mm. in Italy, which could sound weird uh, and, and kind of has positive vibe even if they were of a different strain. But they were protesting like a lot of ufology conventions because like those ufology conventions were kind of you know like posted in the ancient alien series. So basically, that, right? You know, advanced civilizations in 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 in, in the global south were kind of you know like alien you know like kind of you know the aliens did it. And I think there was a need to to kind of fight this narrative because in some ways it it was influential to the to the. Um, to the war view of, of kind of the conservative mindset. Uh, yeah. I will say a lot of the QAnon like kind of stuff is, is a very kind of reductivist uh, uh, war view that tries to, yep. you know, try to put in simple uh, a, a, a kind of, uh, you know, a, a different kind of esoteric religion mixed together with, which is uh, which is yep. what, what what is curious I think about 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 the, the, the modern far right. Um, I think that you know in, in many ways uh, these traditions and this kind of more um, you know underground uh, movements that were related to Marxism and that come from Marxism, but that you know uh, 
at the end uh, had a very different kind of impulse at running in elections and kind of more conventional mm. political staff. Uh, uh, I, I do think they have a, a lot of value because I, I think that, you know, in, in many ways it, 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 it became unchallenged a lot of, of, of positions. And I think also like... Um, as we were talking about the intersection about like like libertarianism and and, and the left, I, I think that you know in many ways I, I often have think that you know standpoint epistemology yeah is a is a principle of libertarian position and and I I it is curious like never has uh, or very few people have defended it from, from a libertarian yeah. perspective but shout out sh- sorry sorry shout out shout out to Nathan Goodman uh, again another former guest who has made that exact argument. <laughs> yeah it's an interesting argument i think that you know like the the issue is that you know like if, if you think that individuals who define themselves uh you know like i think that's really important um for example like me as a peruvian i, I always have the interest in, in in the crypto jewish memory i, I think hmm. you know like uh, there are very few crypto jews formally but uh or, or well I, I will say informally you know because they they are on the most, on the large part, non converted formally, but I think you know their 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 tradition. If we could talk about what they are as a tradition, is very you know a kind of combination of many things. Like you know, in in some ways, like the uh, you know, like at one point, you know, like uh, where uh, uh, you know Jewish Sephardic Jews that try to 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 save themselves in the Inquisition by going to very rural and remote places, and, and in some contexts, like uh, obviously the 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 mix with 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 uh, indigenous people in, in the context of, of, of rural Peru or with with African population in the context of, of rural Brazil. So so this in the context of Peru, this indigenous Jews and in the context of Brazil are black Jews, which hmm. uh, it's, it's it's a very different kind of identities and, and, and kind of, 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 of resistance that was going on against kind of the, 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 the both the, the Spanish rule, but, but also even after independence, because their identity is still tied to a, to a non-Christian identity, which is still, as I mentioned, the, the Christian symbols kind of define Latin America, but in some ways, like this uh, Jewish identity, even if, if on the margins, it is still lives on, uh, and and I think it's it's very interesting. I think obviously from a standpoint of epistemology, it, it is something of the most curious, but something of, of the most, uh, uh, and in some ways, uh, as uh, a historian, a French historian, Adam Bachtel has pointed out, I think it has had a larger influence than. than than taught in in, in, in in Latin American culture in general. And I think in some ways the missionism that Latin America has is a missionism that is not only like uh uh you know in a Christian variety but also in a in a in a in some way of, of Judaic form in, in the sense that 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 at the same time local and at the same time universal which I do think challenge a little bit kind of the regionalism that that sometimes uh, uh, has characterized some some of the messianic readings about Latin America, and and, mm. and I feel that's something important to have in mind. Mm. Yeah. Oh boy, we've been doing this for almost two hours. <laughs> um. Oh man, um, fuck. Sorry, I just maybe I I think I'm like I'm I'm either down with a cold or I'm coming down with one. Uh, it's not COVID, but yeah, yeah. Oh man, fuck. This has been a fucking year, hasn't it? Yeah, it's it's been wild. All right. Well, huh, it is um. Cause it's, it, it has been really good to talk to you again, man. Um, I, yeah. Same. It's, it's always a, a pleasure talking to you. All right. Well, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, do you, do you like, uh, I mean, obviously like people should, uh, go listen to your politics. Um, it, sorry, God, uh, go listen to your podcast, uh, history and politics. Um, 
and um, also uh, go listen to the interview you did with um, Derek Vaughn, where you are, which I will include in the show notes, uh, where you like explain uh latin american politics uh far more rigorously than i did because uh vaughn is a far more focused interviewer uh, uh anything else no i i think that's that's uh, we have already dealt with a lot of topics so i think for now yeah. it's, it's it's fine all right fuck yeah um all right well uh uh yeah happy christmas um i'm gonna hopefully well actually no it, i probably will be releasing this after christmas uh so yeah happy new year um i would say let's hope that 2020 2022 doesn't suck as much as 2021 but uh we've learned anything over the last couple of years it's that things can always get worse so uh <laughs> yeah yeah happy holidays to me so Hope we talk early. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I hope if nothing else, like happy holidays. Um I I, I I I will say this. I actually my when I think about the future, I I think things in many respects uh will get worse. Um although that also I think I think also there's like the possibility of um just, you know, uh I, I think I think people like really really unappreciate just like the degree to which uh like certain things are just being held back by uh like interests of small groups and I think you know if like that control is disrupted things could on certain axes become like a lot better quite quickly but my my general like prediction is I think like things are going to get worse things are going to get better on certain axes but i think i think like the thing i'm most confident in predicting is just things are going to get weirder uh so yeah here here's to weird 2022 <laughs> i'll leave it at that yeah it, it it's certainly going to be weirder the war is is getting more strange all right fuck yeah world is getting more strange that's going to be the title all right Thank <laughs> you.